today I'm going to be sharing with you uh, how I got my butt kicked by a grandma. Um, we're going to be playing a fun game, a very fun game. And all of this is going to relate back to your business in a really cool, almost spooky kind of way. Um, we also have some volunteers today who are going to come up and they've so generously opened themselves up for cross-examination, so that should be a lot of fun too. I had the great privilege a few weeks ago to train uh, directly with Kathy <coughs> Colby. Who here has ever heard of the Colby Index before? About half the room? Okay. So the Colby Index, at first glance you might say it's like a personality test. That's not entirely accurate, okay? Because there's actually like three parts to the mind. So if you've ever had to hire anyone, or if you've ever wondered why is this business partnership not working, or why is my spouse make me so frustrated all the time? It could be for any number of reasons, not just personality. Okay? Um, in fact, there's three parts to the mind. So this is a writer downer if you're taking notes here today. There's three parts to the mind. One, which is what we normally think of when we think of personality tests, is called the affective. So if you've heard of Myers-Briggs, DISC, those kinds of tests, really big on the affective. So um, affective means to me um, kind of like attitudes, preferences, what you would like to do, okay? Um, values, uh, your temperament even, or you know, we talk about outgoing versus being an introvert, those kinds of things. So that's all personality, that's all affective. That's only part of the story though. Because if you have a really great attitude, does that make you great at your job? Nope. Absolutely not, right? So we need a second part to the story, and that's called cognitive, okay? So that's writer down number two, cognitive. Cognitive is, do you have the skills? So maybe with your romantic partner or a business partner, you guys have a great attitude, you really want to be together, but you just don't have the communication skills. You cut each other off all the time, the women in the room are like, oh god, yeah, ugh. So this whole, cognitive part is pretty big too. You need to have accounting skills to be an accountant. You need to have graphic design skills to be a graphic designer. So I would say up until recently, I felt like there was something missing because I knew about those two already. You know, if you've read a lot of business books, you've heard about do we have the right person in the right seat, right? Do they have the right values and are they doing the right job? Like, do they have the right skills and whatnot? I just still felt there was something missing. Um, as a strategic coach participant, some of you have heard of strategic coach before. Yeah, it's like a year-long program for entrepreneurs in kind of six, seven, eight figure range and you go every three months and I'm, I'm in the Vancouver group. And they're really big on this thing called the Colby Index. So because of that, I started learning more and um, discovered there's actually a third part to the story. Cognition and affect is only part of it. The third is what Kathy Colby has called conation. Okay? So conation is not what you would like to do. It's not what you can do. It's not what you ought to do. It's just what you will do. <laughs> so as I flew to Phoenix, you know, a few weeks ago and all the other trips that have gone before it, this year I've been to New York and Chicago and Mexico and San Francisco, every single time, I knew I would be better off if I packed my suitcase the night before. Seems like a good idea. That's a real smart move in case you realize you forgot something in the last minute. Like every possible way you look at it, packing the night before is a good idea, okay? So, so my, my affective wanted to pack the night before, okay? Did I have the skills to pack the night before? Well, yeah, I had the clothes in my room and I had the suitcase and luggage and I knew how to organize things, make a checklist if, if I want to do that or just throw it in. I have the skills, right? So I have the cognition to be able to pack the suitcase. Yet for every single trip I've taken, as long as I can remember, 35 minutes before it's time to leave, I'm ramming everything in the suitcase, zipping that thing up and hitting the road probably 10 minutes late, 140K down the hen day, and here we are screaming through, calling WestJet, am I gonna make it there on time? Flash the passport, wish I had Nexus, and make it just in the nick of time. I, I ugh, okay? That is what I will do. 
You're here, okay. <laughs> so anybody can do, I mean, okay, I can't be Michael Jordan, LeBron James, I can't probably fly to the moon, you know, those kinds. So I mean, you know, outside of exceptional physical or exceptional intelligence type situations, I probably could do any job or any role, and any one of you could do. Like, if you really had to, could you sit there and knock out data entry for a long time? Yes, if you really needed to, could you make 100 cold calls if your like, life depended on it? Yeah, you could. could. Could you be 15 minutes early if you were meeting the Prime Minister of Canada or the President of the United States of America? Yeah, you could, even if you are a person who typically is last minute or whatever, okay? So we all can do pretty much anything, okay? But what we can't do over the medium and long term is anything. I can, you know, if I was told I'd have an opportunity to meet the Prime Minister of Canada or the President of the United States of America, if I was 15 minutes early for my flight, I'm sorry, 15 minutes early for the one hour early of the flight, then I could do it. You know, I could do it. Every single one of us in this room could do it. We could find it in ourselves to do it. Could I do that every single day, five days a week, four weeks a month, 12 months a year? Absolutely not. Like, as crazy as it sounds, I just don't think I could. So, this is, this is, the, this is conation, you know, is what do you instinctively do? Like, we don't have to teach a cat how to chase a mouse, it just does it, okay? And likewise, in your business, in your work, you just do certain things naturally. You may not be aware of it. You may not be aware of your business partner, your staff's instincts, but trust me, they're operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the heartbreaking part for me is how many business partnerships, maybe employee relationships end because one partner or one party thinks the other is lazy, inconsiderate, all these affective judgments, when in fact it's just a difference of conation. <laughs> so today we're gonna see a crazy game, a crazy game that's gonna put all this on beautiful display. Um, and then uh, I've also asked a couple, uh, it's two business partners um, to each other that, that, uh, that I know, I've asked them to come up, we're gonna look at how they interact with each other. And I'll be able to tell them, most likely, based on their Colby score, where they're gonna hit hangups and where they're not, okay? Now, Colby, the Colby index is stone simple, okay? It's 36 questions, you do it online, it takes like 20 minutes to fill out, it's like deceptively simple. What it spits out is not a snapshot in time, okay? A lot of the affective tests like Myers-Briggs are oftentimes a snapshot of where you're at right now, okay? The Colby index is you from birth. K Kathy Colby's so good at, I mean, this has been her life's work for decades now, that she can actually watch a toddler play and she knows what that child's MO or modus operandi is what she calls it, her, the Colby score will be for the rest of that child's life. How powerful is that for that child when they're trying to figure out, you know, what learning would make sense in school? What kind of careers should they go after? What kind of partnerships should they look for? Absolutely amazing. Another note on this idea of we can do anything. Let me just add that every single one of you does, whether you've taken the test or not, every one of you has a Colby score. You just may, maybe you haven't done the test yet, okay? Um, every one of us can act. You'll see that I'm gonna, I'm gonna point out that there's four different modes, okay? They are called, this is a writer downer, they are called fact finder, follow through, quick start, and implementer. Okay, I'll say it again. They are fact finder, quick start, said that wrong, fact finder, follow through, quick start, implementer. Okay, so, um, that's, it's four columns, which you'll see, and then each is kind of scored one to 10. Now, one doesn't mean the best, like first place, nor does it mean the worst, as in only one out of 10, okay? 
every score on all four of the modes is good. There's no bad Colby score out there, okay? So I'm going to, um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. can somebody uh, grab through the doors? I have this little plate, this little stand-up sign thing. It's my Colby score. I'll show you my Colby score so you guys can see. It's on the back table there, Rich. Um, even if I am, yeah, thank you. All right, so this is a Colby score here. I just realized it'd be a lot easier just to see it, okay? So just because I'm high in fact finder, I'm a seven, and a six in follow through, three in quick start, five in implementer, that doesn't mean that I can't do other things. I'm, I'm quote unquote low in quick start, but all that means is I just don't have as much quick start, say, energy to give. Don't ask me to go cold call 100 people, I'll quit at like 15. But I can do the 15, right? I think what's more important than your individual Colby score is the interaction of it with, between you and your position, you and your business partner, you and your job, okay? And then from there, the interaction of Colby scores on a team, okay? Because nobody makes it through this life alone, okay? We, it's life's a team sport, and knowing how that all interacts is the game changer, okay? So seven, six, three, five, if you're writing this down. <laughs> if you wanna know how to negotiate with me, if you wanna know how to sell me, if you wanna know how to work with me, if you wanna know how I organize my life, this is it right here, seven, six, three, five, okay? All right, Richard's smiling. Because <laughs> his score is so different than mine and we've had some fun with that. Okay, I think we should probably just jump into this game, um, ASAP. Um, the game's gonna be happening on the table behind me here, okay? Um, you're gonna wanna be able to see kind of, you know, what's going on. So if you're having a tough time seeing in the back, you're welcome to bring a chair up and, you know, make a bit of a, I don't know, semicircle here or something like that to be able to see what's going on. So what's gonna happen is I've already talked to three people here today. Um, I'm gonna ask them to leave the room, okay? Then, the rest of us, we're gonna t have a chat, then we're gonna bring them back, and then some stuff's gonna happen. Okay, how about that? So, I would like for Richard Canfield, Brent Miller, and Ash Badry to please all, um, I need you to do something. I need you to go all the way to the um, lobby and grab uh, a cookie for each of yourselves eat it, and then come back. So what I'm saying is give us like, you know, five, six minutes, then just hang out, out here and we'll get somebody to come bring you in. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the game we're playing is called Glop Shop. Okay, the game is called Glop Shop. What this team is gonna have to do is create a children's educational toy they're gonna have three minutes to build the toy, then one minute to do an infomercial on, um, you know, to sell it, okay? To sell it to the masses, okay? This is an amazing exercise because what they have to use to build their toy is this mass of junk, glop, okay? So what we're doing is we're stripping away any of the cognitive, the skills, they don't know, they've never done this before, okay? And we're also removing a lot of the maybe affective ideas around like, oh, I wanna do this or I don't wanna do it or preferences or whatever. Now we may still have some of that at play, okay? Some of them might feel nervous of being in front of a group and that kind of thing, but we're just gonna play. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to uh, make some predictions because this is the Colby score of each of them. So, Rich, Richard Canfield, is a 3386. What this means, Vic, can you see this okay? Yeah? A 3386. So Rich right here, his first strategy is quick start. Take notes on this, okay? Take notes on this if you want. I promise you, as soon as this exercise starts, Rich is gonna have a million ideas. He's like, oh, we can do this, we can do that. How about we try this, how would you try that? And he's just gonna be this fountain of ideas, okay? That's the quick start, okay? Now quick start, I mean, um, 
we'll get into it later, but if, it, like I'm low in quick start and yet I still have a successful business, okay? So it doesn't mean that you're lazy if you're low quick start, okay? It's just a different number. Now Rich's second um, initiator is over here as an implementer. Now implementer doesn't mean he implements his plans. No, 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 different use of the word. A hockey stick is an implement, okay? A bobcat is an implement, okay? A surgical tool is an implement, okay? So this is how much do they like, how much do they operate in the physical world, like to use their hands, like to see things demonstrated, okay? So when you combine Rich's quick start with Rich's implementer, he's gonna be sitting here picking it up, playing it play by play, talking about it. He's gonna be saying, oh, how about we do this? So what about that? And you're gonna see him just talking and playing and you know, experiencing everything physically, okay? Now Rich is also what's called preventive in Fact Finder. Rich hates a bunch of information. He hates long descriptions. He, he hates the, you know, telling long stories. He's a bottom line information kind of guy, okay? Just give me the bottom line. Rich is also prevent, uh, preventative in what's called uh, uh, follow through. So follow through is structure and systems. That man has a tough time sticking on one task because of his quick start and he hates following procedures and structures and systems. He's always looking for shortcuts and that would absolutely infuriate somebody who's in a highly structured, systemized business. Winnie's dying laughing at the back because she's worked with Richard for a long time. Okay, so we could say, oh, well, it's great, he's a great quick start and you know, it's horrible that he can't follow systems. Okay, but here's the thing. If you take somebody who's low in quick start, they're like just trying to maintain the status quo and no innovation comes. Okay, so high and low are both strong. Likewise, if someone is just the bottom line, you might say, well, that's great because you know, now we can just get into action quickly. But you know what? I'm a high fact finder and that's extremely important in certain situations, like if we're doing due diligence to buy a property or analyzing a situation, okay? So all scores are good. You're gonna see Ash. Ash initiates here in Fact Finder. Ash wants all the information, all the details. He tells stories with lots of information. He needs a sense, Shanna who's engaged to him is like almost dying right now. <laughs> so Ash, it's just how he is, okay? That's just how he is. He needs a sense of priority, right? You know, what, what needs to happen first. He wants a sense of what happened in the past, okay? Because he wants to see case studies to know how this all fits in, okay? And we're gonna see Ash because he's an eight in fact finder. In here, there's a pad of paper and a pen and he's probably gonna grab for that, okay? So watch to see who grabs for the pad of paper and pen. It'll probably be Ash because he gets that sense of like, okay, now I can hold the information all in one place. Now, Ash is second. Um, you can see there's a tie in the sixes. There's actually something called theory of dominance that one dominates over the other. So I'll just say that Ash's second initiator is the follow through. So Ash is gonna wanna plan. Ash is gonna wanna know what's the game plan? What are the rules? Are we supposed to come up with a price? Are we supposed, like hold on guys. And he's gonna try and slow it all down, which is gonna be an absolute train wreck when we combine him with Rich who just wants to go, 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 okay? Now furthermore, we're gonna see that Ash is a preventer right here in, um, in uh, Quick Start, okay? So like, absolutely, thanks, yeah. You can just put those at the back there, thank you. So what that means is Ash wants to maintain the status quo, let's not change things too quickly, and like heart attack if you know, things get a little crazy, which is why we've picked Rich to be in the group as well. Okay? All right. Shanna, you're gonna have a frazzled uh, fiance here in a few minutes. Now, that's okay though, because I've also picked Brent, okay? Now Brent is a 7724. Brent, again, we've got this tie, and Brent, because of this theory of dominance, he, he's going to initiate in Fact Finder, okay? So that's, Kind of the same as Ash, okay? So you're gonna hear Brent's gonna try and ask me a bunch of questions, like what's the rules, like who's this for? You know, all those kinds of questions. Um, Brent though is lower in fact finder than Ash, okay? And when, when they see Rich blowing down the doors and going way down, they're probably gonna end up talking to each other, try and gang up and slow down Canfield, okay? 
Canfield's nickname, by the way, is Rolling Thunder, in case you didn't know, okay? Now Brent, because he's lower than Ash, he's gonna move from his initiating mode, which is um, fact finder, into follow through much more quickly. He's gonna move on into follow through. And you'll see Brent is more, like I wish Brent was seven, eight, because then he would start in that fact finder and the demonstration would be even better. He's not though, so he'll start here, but then he'll probably move on to uh, his, his uh, follow through. And so what that means is, all of this stuff, he's gonna probably try and sift and sort and organize it. You know, he'll, he might take like all the wood items and put them together or maybe put all the certain colors together. There's a few marbles in here. He might actually try and put the marbles in cups. In fact, something that I should do is I should jack up this table just a little bit on one side so the marble starts rolling off the table and you'll see Brent will be the one to grab for it. Like, you know, because Canfield, who cares? It can roll off, it doesn't matter, right? But but for Brent, that sense of order and system and structure is very, very important. So he'll probably be the one to grab for the marbles, okay? So um, you're also going to see that um, what's really big in the quick start, okay, is uh, improvisation, okay? So during the infomercial at the end, which is one minute long, okay, a couple things are gonna happen. First of all, um, Rich is probably gonna be the one to do the speaking. Quick starts tend to like to be on the spot, making things up, speaking t generally, but that's not always, okay? That's, that's bordering into the, aff into the uh, affective, okay? Now, he probably, I do know him though, and he probably will be, will be the one to speak. And furthermore, he'll probably make things up that weren't even discussed on the team, okay? Like, like, like we're talking, yeah, people are just dying because they know the guy, right? So, you know, like the team might say, oh, the price is gonna be $200 if they even get to that point. And three minutes isn't a lot of time. And Rich might just on the fly be like, oh, it's $400 during the infomercial. Like, who knows, right? Something else about the quick start is when the last minute hits, they spring into action, okay? So I'm gonna ask somebody in here to be a timer and we're gonna go three minutes all the way down. And when we hit one minute, I want the timer to say one minute remaining and you're gonna hit Canfield, hit high gear, okay? Because he's gonna be like, oh my God, okay, it's game time. Let's go, let's go, right? Now, we haven't really talked too much about this last score, which is implementer, okay? Now, actually, all three of these guys are what's called um, accommodating in implementer, because they're middle. So one, two, three is preventing, right? So we've got one, uh, oh, oh, I should have circled, I'm sorry, I used the wrong colors for circling here, but this is a preventer, that's a pre preventer, because it's one, two, three, okay? Four, five, six is accommodating, okay? So that's a person who's kind of more flexible to kind of go either way, okay? And then seven, eight, nine, ten is initiating, okay? So that's, uh, that's kind of how that shakes out. Any questions before we move on or do we just want to see this train wreck happen? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, does somebody want to, um, I almost feel bad for doing this to the Hilton because they set up such a beautiful room. Does somebody want to get me like a napkin or something to prop up one of the legs? Because this is really, I want to see these marbles roll off the table. I want to, I want to, I really want to, oh, there's one rolling away already. And we're gonna strip this off right here. Give me napkins or something like that. Yeah, one or two, yeah, exactly. Jack, jack up that side right there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, actually we're gonna use this to jack it up even more. Let's go in one corner too, let's really make this, let's really make this thing uneven. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is great. Vic, can you get this? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Winnie, can you please? Oh, wait. Sorry. Who's timing? Who wants to be the timer? Aaron? Okay. So three minutes. And then, uh, so three minutes down, and then one minute for the infomercial. Okay. All right, yeah, Winnie, go and get our victim, I mean, our participants, yeah. This is gonna be good. Who's excited to see this go down? Yeah, yeah. okay. Canfield, come on up. Let's give him a round of applause. Woo! Let's give him a little more energy than that, a little more energy than that, a little bit more. Woo! All right, ow! All right, gentlemen, please have a seat. See how Canfield just went and sit down, didn't ask for any instructions? <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome. You are the stars of the show. We are 
doing something called glop shop. Sounds good. Here's the deal. You are going to design for all of us rabid buyers. You're, you're at a toy show and we are all major, major buyers. Like we've got millions of dollars to buy children's toys and we're now, this is your pitch. This is like a dragon's den almost kind of pitch, okay? Now, you need to come up with a children's educational toy, okay? Children's educational toy. And your businesses are riding on it, okay? This one pitch could make or break your business. You're gonna have three minutes to build the toy, okay? Three minutes, it just looked ugly. Three minutes to build the toy, okay? And at the end of the three minutes, you're gonna have one minute to do an infomercial style pitch, okay? To us, the audience, and remember, we've got millions of dollars at stake here. This could change the direction, not only of your business, but your life, right? To have all that new money coming in. Okay, children's educational toy. Okay, you're gonna work together. Three minutes to build the toy. One minute infomercial, and you will get a one minute warning in here, okay? So that you know where you're at in time, okay? All right, we've got it. Can everybody see? Yes, 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 okay, good. Okay, so we've got, we've got a, an official timer. Erin, straight in the middle here. Yeah, Erin, put your hand up. She's gonna be the official timer. This is what you're going to use to build your children's educational toy, okay? And Erin, are you ready? ready? On your marks, get set, and go. So, Nice and loud, so we can all hear Kids so, like switches. Kids like switches. They do. Yep. Yeah. They like switches. Um, what else we got? We got some blocks. We got dice. Dice are easy. They're simple to work with. What's going on? Lego. Marbles. I love Lego. Okay, we lose your marbles. We have a limited Lego supply here, Tim. Okay, we have more Lego. Um, so, what do we got? I see money, big money. We've got dice. Dice are good, there's enough of them. Beads. Bunch of wood related things. Beads and some wire. Crap ton of marbles. Something together, right? Yep. Okay. Um, what, what do you kids love to do and play with, and what's going to get kids excited? Who would give us some money for something? People already know the Slinky. Do you agree? Slinky's been done. Slinky's been done, but what can we do different with the Slinky to repurpose it with what we have? Oh, shit. I have no idea. Um, Hmm. I'm going to string some beads here. String beads, okay? We can teach them about money. Uh, we can teach them about money. Money and dice. Dice money. game. Money and dice, dice game. So gambling for kids. <laughs> 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 Gambling for kids. And there's a and there's a yep, we're done. So oh, sounds good. Okay, got that. Okay. Um, so we're gonna teach some uh, cognitive math skills and interactive fun and they're gonna to count money and do they get to win them fake money? Sure. Yeah, of course. Okay, we need to know that for the info. Right? We need to know that for the info. So there's a prize. Is there anything here we can use as a prize? Hmm. Slinky? A lot of that is Slinky's a good prize. Okay. Um What's the name? What's the name already? Time? You guys have one minute left now. One minute. Guys. One minute. Here we go. We got a name for our, uh, our kid gambling uh, addiction uh, avoidance <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, uh, yeah. gambling avoidance? Gambling avoidance. That's a, that's a educational, I guess. Uh, How about uh, well, it's good. It's just something that teaches them about money, and they get to roll dice and count stuff. But we need funny. Cool name for different. Come on, quick start. Yeah. Mm. How about? Uh, geez, I don't know. I got nothing. If only we could have audience participation and suggestions. Is that part of the rules? Can we do that? <laughs> Time is almost up. Okay. Uh, it's. Um, who wants to do the commercial? Yeah, here's a. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So we'll come up with that. We can uh, oh, working. Straight. We could be the kids. Demonstrating. Kids demonstrating. We're gonna need some money for that. Marbles everywhere. Okay. <laughs> so we got a bookie, we got some dice, and we have multiple color dice, so that's pretty important. Okay, time's up. Time for an infomercial. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Woo! Time for an infomercial.
for all being here with us today. Um, we're going to be demonstrating a really neat concept game that we've come up with. Uh, something that's an educational tool for kids, so we can really help them explore the dynamics of math and uh, be able to really uh, you know, get interactive with it as well. Who here, just by a show of hands, who here actually enjoys math? So I got like, I got like four people that kind of enjoy math. So for, who here does, would prefer not to do anything with math and calculators if you could avoid it? So like mostly everyone else. So if you, <laughs> if you were a kid and you wanted to maybe have a better uh, education around math, you'd probably want something interactive. Can I just show hands for who would want something interactive? That'd be a helpful tool for kids. Like, so, so, you, so you can see there might be a need for that in, the, in, in our educational environment. Do you guys agree with me? Okay, so it's important we get that education out to the kids. Left. So what we have here is uh, it, it's a really neat tool. We're going to be using money, dice, and we're going to have uh, basically we're, we're, the game is called um, Math Bookie. And <laughs> <laughs> what, we do, what we do is we're teaching kids how to track money. Uh, so we're incorporating some financial skill sets in there as well. Okay, time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Thank you. Have a seat. Thank you. Have a seat. <laughs> Okay. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> okay, leave the mic right there. So some, somehow we improvised from a gambling addiction prevention game to a math skills game. Interesting. Somehow we saw Brent, did you see with his hands at the very beginning he's sorting the dice to find all the dice together and then all the wood piece and then he says he got all the Lego together and said, oh Tim we have a Lego shortage problem. Okay. <laughs> Right? Did you see that? Did you all see Brent was uncoiling the piece of metal because it's not in order? He needed to get order to sort it out, to, to like lengthen it, and, right? And at the end, we've got marbles falling off. Rich doesn't care, right? It can just keep going, not a priority, okay? Um, Ash, the whole time, is probably thinking like, why are we even doing this? <laughs> I don't have a sense of reason why we're doing this. This Canfield guy's plowing through. This is moving too quick. I don't like this. Get me out of here. Like, I'm not, even, I'm not even doing this, OK? If we look at total word count of the three people, Canfield was like 90%. OK, Brent and Ash were a, a few fewer, you might say, OK? So when we look at their Colby scores, we get to see exactly what we talked about playing out. Does, does anybody see what I'm seeing here? Yeah. yeah? OK, maybe clap your hands if you thought that was right on point. OK. Okay, okay, so, um, you know, you guys, thanks for putting up with what was designed to be a train wreck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hear, um, and please keep it to uh, 30 seconds from each of you what that was like for you. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, I, and I don't have to tell you to go first, because you're going to go first anyway. Well, I had the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I definitely, uh, we talked about our scores in advance before coming in here, so I guess Ooh. not knowing what the game, the, what the game is going to be, I mean, maybe I had, we had a little bit of an idea what things might kind of happen to, if it was going to be a game. But ultimately, uh, I mean, I think uh, having more purpose and knowing what we were actually doing in a better time frame. Like, in my mind, I'm thinking, geez, well, no one would present this to a million dollars of people in a room for, with three minutes. Yeah. But whatever, it's a game. So let's just go with it. Let's just go but, with it. But, yep. but in reality, I'm, I'm still thinking in my back of my head. So part of that, you know, cognitive saying sure. is, well, why are we doing this again? Oh, well, well, we're doing it and we're here. So let's just have a let's good show. Go for it, yeah. Good yeah. show. Brent? Well, yeah, looking at the disorganized uh, <laughs> chaos in front of me, I was a little uneasy with that. Like, we gotta, we gotta make some, we gotta sort this out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little bit of organization <laughs> in place before we can do anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, nothing was gonna happen until I was able to piece together what do we have to work with. Right. Uh, and then, of course, kind of thinking objectively, like, okay, well, what's the right answer here? How do we put this together to win whatever we're supposed to be yep. trying to do here? Yeah. And. Uh, like you said, the, it was kind of presented with the idea it was going to be a train wreck. Right, right. Ash? Well, my thought was this is supposed to be a pitch for lots of money. So the biggest, most important part of it is really the pitch. And these guys are just, well, Rich is going right against the wall. He's just <laughs> getting in there. So I thought, well, I'll just hop on the train and help where I can and see where it goes. Nice. What did you think of the exercise in general? Pretty interesting. Pretty fun. interesting. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. OK. Interesting. Okay, got it. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can just leave that right there. I gotta. I gotta watch time here. Okay. So, um, if we had more time, I would go into each of your scores and give you some ideas of how you would best work with other people. What kind of an assistant you might like hire for your job. 
um, where you might kind of hit some roadblocks in your job or in your business, okay? And we certainly can do that. So uh, my consulting rate usually is around $500 an hour. If you guys want to book a half hour with me for being here and for volunteering, I'm happy to spend half an hour with each of you on the phone to tell you a more in-depth interpretation on your specific score. Does that sound good? Sure. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Great. So I'm going to get you guys, don't move yet, but I'm going to get you to move back to your seats. And then I'm going to get uh, JP and Matt to come up. And we're going to do another kind of quick analysis. This is the business partners. And so it's not a, not a game. This is their real life business. Okay. So let's uh, make the switch over and give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> All right, JP and Matt, come on up. I'm sorry that you guys can, I should try and turn this or something so you guys can see a little better. Yeah. Okay, and also, um, the very back there, Aaron, do you want to grab, there's five little stands there. And if you can bring them up. I had you guys' scores written down somewhere here. Should be sure. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so once again, we've got fact finder is the first number, follow through is the next number, quick starts the third, and implementer is the fourth. So Matt is uh, seven four 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 is seven, four, four, four. And uh, JP, or Jamie, is uh, six, four, four, six. Six, four, four, six. Okay, so there's a very fascinating, a very fascinating dynamic here. Where does Matt initiate? Fact finder, okay. So where's my red pen? Matt initiates in Fact Finder. Okay. So Matt, you are, you probably like to get a lot of information. You're probably more likely to write the business plan in the business. Um, you like to have a sense of priority. You would probably also like to have a sense of like um, what's worked in the past, case studies. Um, they're opening a float studio right now. So a very interesting service. I encourage you to talk to them, Modern Gravity Float. And um, you probably researched all the other float centers that have opened in the past to see what worked before. OK, they're both smiling. <laughs> and so your second um, theory of dominance, because we've got three that are matching, is actually quick start over here. So four is a quick start. Now, it's not like that's actually a middle of the road score. It's not an initiator. So. Um, you might, uh, b between the two of you, you'll probably, yeah, you're probably going to be the one who's going to come up with plans and ideas and push them forward a little bit more quickly. Um, you're probably um, at times thinking like, um, you know, m maybe looking to your partner, hoping for a little bit of more initiation on his part. Now, here's the thing, though, is that JP, he's 6446, and this is actually one of the rarest scores of all. What's his initiating number? He doesn't have one. He has no score that's 7, 8, 9, or 10. OK? So in business books and everything, we say, oh, you know, you got to be a fast to implement. You got to be, you know, selling is everything. Like, there's all this vernacular, and there's all this, like, you know, wisdom and tradition. But the thing is, is most books oftentimes, well, I can't say that. A lot of seminars you go to, a lot of business seminars, are put on by quick start people, right, who like to get up and talk and yeah, have this, uh, this um, quick start fall, uh, fact finders are oftentimes people get a lot of information like to share a lot. Not always. I'm not a high quick start, okay? But oftentimes you get hit with 100 different ideas at a business seminar and you're expected to walk out and implement all of them. And it's just like, whoa, that's, that's quick start heavy. Okay, so this is one of the most 
so JP, whether you know this or not, this is the most, one of the most valuable on a team. Perfect, yeah. Matt's, Matt, Matt should be thanking you or your parents or whatever for, for this score, okay? Yeah, th thank you for being you. There's actually another person in this room who is this score. There might be more than one person. Less than 10%, less than 10% less than 10 of the population is what's called the accommodator or the mediator, okay? The mediator, because they're in the middle on all four of the different modes, is amazing at being able to work between people, to broker deals between people, to manage a staff, to keep a whole construction crew going, to keep everybody happy, to keep everything moving, okay? Um, so right now, um, right now, because it's the very start of the business and there isn't a lot of like between people to kind of manage, JP, you're probably just waiting for Matt to give you some direction. Do you want to say that into the mic? That's exactly what's happening, actually. Okay, can you say more about that? Um, well, to start off, I guess like most of the ideas kind of came from you, and you kind of brought them to me, then I spit them back to you, and then we kind of decided together, right? So that's usually how things go down, actually. Okay. Yeah. And, and so instead of that being like a deficit or a downside or whatever, do you guys see how that's actually just how you guys work? Yeah. And the differences between you actually are a great gift. And, and so if you know that, and I'll tell you, this is how you deal with Matt, okay? He is high fact finder and he starts, and it's a big gap from fact finder to the next thing. So when you're talking to Matt, if you want to give him some, ask him for something or whatever, give him a problem to solve. Say, Matt, we got this problem. You know, this is a situation, can you help me? Instead of saying, Matt, do this, okay? okay? Uh, also, Matt needs a lot of information to make a decision, okay? He's not a nine, so he doesn't need the whole story, but he needs a lot of backstory. He needs a lot of information on what worked before. He needs um, the reasons why we're doing this. He also needs a sense of priority. If you're asking him for three things, tell him what's most important. And that will really make things a whole lot smoother. Okay? In dealing with JP, understand that if you have the vision, I mean, obviously you need to be respectful and all the rest, but he's ready to rock. So when you see the vision, it doesn't have to be like, oh, God, yeah. JP's just like, he's not starting anything. Oh, he's like lazy. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. He's ready to rock. You just point this man who's full of energy and talent, and you point him in a direction, and you let him rip, okay? And it's, you're not being like a dictator by, by asking him to do something. You're just playing to your strength. That's all, okay? So that's like, I, I hope the business partnership can flourish because of, you know, be, because of this new understanding. Now, how can JP really kick ass in the next few months for you guys? Put JP on site for the construction and have him managing the contractors, okay? He's also a six, which is pretty high in implementer, okay? So he likes to be on site. He likes to be working with physical things. He likes to walk through the space and see how it's looking, okay? Um, when there's a bunch of contractors coming and going and you're building something new, right? There can be a little bit of friction between the contractors. JP is gonna smooth it all out. This man, everybody loves this guy. He's super smooth. He keeps everybody happy. Is that true? So smooth, so smooth. So smooth yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and so, for, for, so there's at least one other person in the room who has this, um, this mediator score, okay? Now, a, a lot of us know each other just because we've been doing these lunches for a while or, or your business partners, friends. Does anybody know who I might be referring to? Winnie Lau. How nice is it to deal with Winnie? Right? Everybody loves Winnie. Winnie gets along with every... I see people nodding. They're like, yup, okay? Winnie is this very rare and valuable team player, okay? If Winnie's working completely on her own, and uh, Winnie, your score is not JP's, <laughs> but, but I actually printed out a special score like this on a special metal stand. You got the nicest stand of everybody. <laughs> and it's out there just so that you've got it, you know, because you're such a great volunteer here for all of our events. Um, and so, you know, it can be tough to start a business and to be alone when you're not high in quick start. You know what I mean? Um, but, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means how you go about getting business is going to be much different. So instead of cold calling and picking up the phone, you would be far better, surprise, surprise, building relationships and meeting people and introducing them. Okay, there's people like almost you know, like laughing here. They're just like, it's so true. That's her. And by, by selling yourself and your personality being a great bridge between people, that's how you get your name out. That's how you build the relationships and that's how you'll, you'll be selling. 
don't ever try and go do an infomercial on TV or some kind of big like, you know, something where you're put on the spot to make things up on the fly or, you know, that kind of thing. It's just not you and it just wouldn't work, right? <laughs> like, yeah, well, right. And you and Rich have worked together for, for a lot of years and you guys are a great compliment because of it. Like, Rich, would you say that Winnie has bailed your ass out of a lot of situations? <laughs> She's a great accountability partner. Great, yeah, okay, awesome. Okay, so again, if we had more time, you guys, and I'm happy to do it with each of you one-on-one -on -one or as a group, the three of us, um, we can spend some time to go deeper into your individual um, MOs or indexes, and then from there, um, look at how it might work together better. So, and for all five of you um, to prepare for today, because I'm a high fact finder, um, I actually worked directly with um, some of the master uh, consultants at Colby to break down each of your scores and to, to look at how they interact. So um, you're getting not only my certification and everything in Colby, you're also getting the support of um, you know, some even more talented people. Okay? So um, I know we are getting close to time. We're like at 1.15, so I've only got about five, four, uh, five minutes left to ta talk, and then we've got 10 minutes of Q&A. Um, so what I'd like to do before we get to Q&A is just to hear you guys maybe speak into the mic. I mean, I only gave you two, three, four points or something like that, but um, do you want to maybe speak in the mic? Tell me some of your feedback. Um, I think there's a lot of accurate description about what we're going on now. And I know you mentioned a few things on the phone before we even came here that were very spot on. And I remember not telling you anything right. about that. And I was kind of like, oh, that's really interesting. Um, and so, yeah, interesting is probably the, the key word because there's a lot of things that I had assumptions about and maybe frustrations, but a lot of time just find solutions. But this just makes it a lot more clear. Right. So. Right. I think you hit the nail on the head, man. Exactly describing my personality and exactly how we work together and stuff. It's perfect. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So for me, I was so honored to be able to not intervene, but to, to kind of take, take my Colby skills and for it to intersect with these two guys at the beginning of their business before a year of cognitive friction happens, they now know in the beginning what's probably going to happen and how to deal with each other. Do you think that that's going to, like maybe even save not only their business relationship, but their friendship, because they're friends first, right? What is that gonna do for their, the success of their business and just the sustainability, right? It's, in my opinion, it's everything, you know? Because if you have a horrible partner in personal or in business, every day sucks. <laughs> every day sucks. So to understand, it's almost kind of like a Rosetta Stone of sorts, where it's kind of like, Oh, now I get my partner, right? Thank you very much, gentlemen. You can head on back and we'll give them a round of applause. <laughs> this is like a war zone up here, hey? We've got like flip charts and stuff drawn and marbles on the floor and stuff torn off the table and crap on the, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, before we go into Q&A, um, when you were the sheets for the business breakthrough experience, right, oh, they're right here, okay, thank you. And Winnie, can you also do me one other favor? Can you remind me what the date is of the next lunch like this? Can you look it up on meetup.com? Okay. Okay, so every month, and we've been doing it for over two years, around two years now, we've had this same lunch, okay? So I hope you can, you can make it out to the next one. Um, it's continuing to grow, right? As if you've been coming for a while, you can see we now have like kind of 30 to 40 people coming out every time. Um, we've got more and more people helping the registration desk, it's growing and it's really exciting to see. And, and the, the caliber of the networking just keeps going up every single month as well. Um, and so I hope you can make it out to that. Uh, Winnie will grab the date for us right away. Uh, Friday, May 15th? If that's us there, I, I trust it. So Friday, so it's on a Friday. Usually these are on Thursdays, okay? This time it's gonna be on a Friday. Friday, May the 15th. Mark it down and uh, same format. 
Um, the price might be $29 instead of $19. I'm not sure. Well, we were still working out some of the bugs. Um, but that does allow us to rent a bigger room and it allows us to put on like a better show, right? Um, secondly, if you would like to get your Colby index done, okay, um, I'm in the mood to practice, okay? I'm in the mood to practice. Sorry? You're, okay, you're initiating, okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, if you go to, um, we'll send you an email. Okay, we'll send you an email in the next couple days on the best way to get this done. Um, Colby's still bringing me into their system as a certified consultant, and so I, um, I can get you an index maybe a few dollars cheaper, you know what I mean? So in the next couple days, we'll get you a link to click. I don't know what it's gonna be yet, but it'll give you the opportunity to get your own index. And um, then from there, if you want to book some time with me, um, let's say the first three people, I'll do the interpretation for you for free. Uh, after that, the next whatever number of people, I'll do it for 50 bucks. So you'll be in at 50 bucks for the index and 50 bucks for, to talk to me, okay, for half an hour, okay? Um, third thing, um, this is the business breakthrough experience, okay? Um, Colby is only a piece of what we do. Like Profit Factory is all about helping entrepreneurs build businesses that work, okay? So a part of that is having the right people doing the right things on the team. Colby, right? This is very much what you saw today. Secondly, is taking a look at how do we execute work every single day. In my own marketing company, um, we started using Scrum for business and Scrum, using that strategy, work that used to take two weeks, we're getting done in three and a half days. Crazy acceleration. And the smooth operation between everybody is like never before. It's absolutely magic. Um, Scrum for Business is what I spoke at NYU about, um, about six or eight weeks ago. And, uh, and actually, this is news. Um, I've just been booked to speak at a private mastermind on a mountaintop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to Eden, Utah, it's in May or June, um, and uh, there's a private, it's like it's six, seven, and eight figure business owners by invitation only, and I'm on the faculty to speak about Scrum for Business there, so that's really cool. Yeah, so, uh, so Scrum for Business is a game changer as far as how your team produces work, okay? And then thirdly, um, the third part that we really talk about with, um, with Profit Factory is also once you figure out how to run the business and you, you get, you're, you're kind of getting in that place where you're maybe repeating things instead of discovering new things. So for example, maybe processing credit cards is something that you figured out how to do once and now you have to do it five times a day. Then that's a great place to start putting in checklists and systems. And what's interesting is the person who builds systems might be a, a follow-through person, okay, and might be a fact-finder follow-through kind of person, but that's not necessarily the person that you want to always be running the system once it's up and running, okay? McDonald's would not have 19-year-olds running the same burger system over and over and over again if it was a bunch of quick starts, okay? If all the 19 and 15-year-olds were quick starts, if they were low quick start and low follow-through, they would be improvising, making up hamburgers on the fly like, you know, just you've never seen, okay? So the Colby score even affects systems as far as how we um, build the team to, to get the work done. So business breakthrough experience is something that's been developed over time. There's only 20 tickets available for this. Okay, it's 1,000 bucks to come, 500 to bring a friend. Okay? And it happens right here at the Hilton at uh, Lilac B, I think is the room. It's happening in June 13th and 14th. I'm going to be teaching Scrum for Business. Okay? So Scrum for Business, like I taught at NYU and everywhere else, I'll be teaching that. Um, I'm also going to help you find more $100 an hour tasks in your business. Oftentimes as entrepreneurs, we get stuck doing $10, $15, $20 an hour type work. And sometimes it's because we just don't know where the $100 an hour work type stuff is. So I'll help you find that. Um, I'll also help all of you quick starts out there that have 100 really good ideas and nothing ever seems to cross the finish line. I'll help you to sort through that. Okay, so that you'll literally walk out of the course with a two-week plan underneath your arm. Literally, you get a piece of paper. It's like a blueprint underneath your arm, and you get to walk out. Um, I'll be there personally, and um, 
it's also, uh, this is the same kind of stuff I help implement in, in companies where I get paid $10,000 a month to consult and help them implement. So I can't help you implement in every one of your businesses, that's, but, but you can come and learn, and I'm happy to help you that way. Um, I do offer my better than Hawaii guarantee, okay, my better than Hawaii guarantee on the course. If you implement what we teach, we guarantee you will make or save over $5,000 in your own business, which is the price of a damn fine trip to Hawaii, okay? Um, I didn't ask him to do this ahead of time, but um, Jimmy, would you be willing just to say a word about the last one when you came and what you got out of it? And then after that, we'll move to Q&A. Any part specific about it? Um, how about um, just before the course, what happened in the course, and then after the course since then? And Vic, are you able to see him? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so before the course, um, meaning like five years before the course, <laughs> um, I've, I've had a backlog of stuff in my brain that I've wanted to do, uh, and stuff that I know is profitable, right? Uh, that I just, it's just been there, it's been an idea. Sometimes I start on it, and then I'm off on something else. I'm kind of like Rich in the demonstration. Um, so that's kind of where I walked into the course um, with. I also walked into the course in a place where I can't really afford um, the time to be away from my business for an entire weekend. So um, my favorite part about the course was that I wasn't learning about my business for a weekend. I was actually um, learning and then implementing and then learning and then implementing. So one of the very first things we did was took a sheet of paper, put it up on the board uh, that was my own, and uh, I got my entire backlog done on little sticky notes. So rather than having to rewrite it out on a thousand pieces of paper, I've got little sticky notes that I put onto this one big board. Uh, and then from there, I walked out of the event, um, finding out what was the most high priority for me and taking um, a two week chunk size of work uh, and moving those sticky notes onto a separate board. And I walked home with just that one separate board of this one thing that I need to complete in the next two weeks. Um, got all of it completed in, in, inside of two weeks. It's literally been something I want to do for a year and a half um, that hasn't ever got done. Um, got to do it, got to realize where I was weak, where I w had a strength, and uh, now I'm in the process of um, starting another one of those. So going back to that big board, figuring out what I want to take off, and literally my whole board that I've had for five years in my brain, um, probably in a year, year and a half, I'll have had everything off of, the, of that board complete. Um, and there, I mean, there's probably five different things on there that are all between $100,000 to $500,000 type businesses. Um, so if I can get even one of them done, it will be definitely worth uh, the price and the time to be there, so. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you much. All right, so uh, if you wanna pass those, just hand them around. We can hand them around, actually split it in two and I'll, uh, I'll give half to the other side of the room. Does anybody have any questions on anything they saw today? Be it the course, be it the uh, Colby um, Scrum for Business or anything like that? Scrum mean? What does Scrum mean? Okay, so where does the name Scrum come from? Scrum is a rugby term, right? And oftentimes, uh, traditionally in business, we follow what's called waterfall. Without even knowing it, you think first we do the first thing. You know, first we do the consultation, then we do the planning, then we do the design, then we do the implementation, then we do quality testing. And that's how we all think about work. Not all of us, but most of us are naturally taught you know, that way as kids and in school, right? First you do the outline of your essay, then you, right, okay. The thing is, is um, that hasn't, you know, what plan in life has ever worked out the exact way that you hoped it would? Zero usually. And even if you did get it right, maybe it took you six months to do it and you found out that you built the exact right ladder, ladder but it's leaning on the wrong wall, <laughs> okay? So um, scrum is a way to really work together, just like a rugby scrum, to pass the ball around and have a ton of collaboration and to find those roadblocks, get them out of the way ASAP, and that's what really speeds things up, okay? Any other questions on Colby, what you saw, myself, anything else? Uh, yes? I'm just wondering. Um, oh, Peter, I'll get you the microphone here. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I'm just wondering, uh, speaking from personal experience, when I was... Oh, just the other way around, Peter. I know it's a big... Oh, you want me to talk in this end? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I was young, under 25, I was an introvert. And I was also um, involved in the Canada JCs, which is a personal development organization. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, we said that this is for life, but do you think a person going from, let's say, an introvert to an extrovert wouldn't have some effect on his score? Yeah, so, so thank you for the question, Peter. Thank you. So we said there's three parts to the mind, right? There's the skills, there's, and I'm really oversimplifying, like whoever's watching this, if you're like a psychologist, I understand I'm oversimplifying. 
you know, we've got the skills, okay, we've got the, um, we've got the emotional attitude, values, that kind of thing, and then we've got conation, right, which is Colby. So you can do anything, okay, again, within reason, but you, you can do anything. If you hated cold calling, you could do it, okay? It's possible to mask your Colby natural strengths. It is. It's possible to mask them in the short term, okay? But sustainably speaking, sustainably speaking, a person probably couldn't maintain that for a long time, okay? Um, now, also, when we look at a Colby score, we have to look at the whole picture of the person, okay? Maybe, maybe you've got like, a, like, maybe you're like a four, five, six in follow through, which is like organization and planning, okay? That means that in your life, you've got four, five, six units of planning, structure, systems type energy on any given day or on any given week or month, okay? If you happen to be in your personal life planning a wedding, okay, like Erin is right away here, um, she's using up that planning energy in her personal life and she doesn't have as many ergs, as many units of energy for planning and organizing by the time she gets to work. Or likewise, because I know you're very dedicated to work, maybe you use so much up in your work that when you get home at the end of the day, it's like, oh, Aaron, what do you want to have for supper? And you're like, I don't care, right? And it's like, oh, but I thought you were high follow through. I thought you were the planner. I thought that, you know, it mattered to you. What order things happen? Well, it does. You just burnt out of those units for the day. And so now it's just like, oh yeah, whatever, I don't care, right? So that's part of the story is looking at the whole person, right? And looking at the whole part of their life, right? Um, now also, being an introvert and extrovert, that's something like, you know, believe it or not, there are quick starts, you know, because Rich is a quick start, but there are introvert quick starts. Quick starts aren't just the people that are like making deals and coming up with 100 ideas and, and, and on the phones and on and on. Like, they're still coming up with ideas, they're still open to things changing and risk, but they may just be quiet and they may just kind of keep to themselves. So introvert, extrovert is affective, which is different than Colby, and that can change over time. And it can even change in different situations. Like I'm very open and gregarious here and everything, but there's certain situations like tomorrow, like in an hour from now, I might be in a different situation and I might just be very kind of quiet and in the corner. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, okay. Any other questions? I gotta watch the time because I always promise to Wrap up, okay, so it's like 1.31 right now, so we're officially at the end, okay? I'm, um, I usually stick around for another kind of 30, 45 minutes for anybody that wants to chat or hang out or discuss anything. Um, I think we've sold two tickets so far to the Business Breakthrough Experience, so there's 18 left. I'm not gonna make up some fake thing like, oh, only one left, you know what I mean? Like rush to the back of the room. That's not my style. Um, so uh, if you got questions about that, I'm happy to answer that too. So your time and energy is the most valuable asset. Money will come and money will go. So thank you for taking your precious time, your precious energy to be here today. I hope something here today uh, can really impact you today and moving forward. So thank you for being here.